Okay, I think we're recording now. When I say we, I mean me, I'm alone. My cat is behind me on my couch. See my kitty right there, Kusun is right behind me. Kusun, <laughs> he's a cutie. Um, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. My friend said it's funny how in every video I um, talk about myself as if somebody has never seen me before. I guess maybe that's an autism trait or I'm assuming that somebody is seeing me for the first time. So maybe it's marketing on my part. I don't really know that my desire to explain myself really clearly because I feel misunderstood a lot of the time because my opinions are unusual but my opinions make sense to me. I think of myself as a very common sense human being. Um, I care about my health. I'm really into nutrition and eating real food, fruits, vegetables, meat. I'm into eating like foods that they had in the 1800s, not fake foods. And I very much care about my mental health and my physical health. I go for walks in nature every day. And this morning I had uh, my therapy with a therapist on webcam and it was a challenging session. And then I went for a brisk walk and listened to uh, Mick Jagger and Tom Petty and it kind of revved me up and made me feel like I could feel my anger. I have a lot of anger right now and a lot of fear because I disagree with some of the things happening in the world. And since I'm gonna publish this video on social media websites that do not allow certain opinions, I'm gonna be careful what I say. But if I am skeptical of certain mainstream ideas in how to take care of our health, people are made fun of, belittled, and basically abused and ostracized. And I have felt this way my entire life. Like on the playground as a little kid, I was teased and picked on and made fun of and belittled. And because I was different. And I don't think I was that weird, but I was a little bit shy and I'm a bit of an introvert. I'm left-handed, I'm an only child. I was raised by a mom who studied Advaita Vedanta, Zen Buddhism and non-duality. And she's highly intellectual and she meditated and she had a kind of attitude about not being a suburban housewife kind of person. And she was above all of that. So I grew up with a real attitude. My mom had a real attitude about what kind of person she is versus not. And I felt as a child that I needed to fight for my right to, <laughs> Tori Amos says, you got to fight for your right to have a monster. Tori Amos once said that in an interview. Tori Amos is a musician that I love and I've met a few times and given her hand painted shoes. That's a whole nother story, but uh, my mom, when I was a kid, her art studio was our garage and she wrote F-U-C-K suburbia on the garage wall. And um, just to give you an indication of her attitude about living in a suburb in San Diego. Um, and then my dad uh, wrote comedy and music and was a tennis teacher and very athletic, but he's very goal oriented and he kind of I was kind of expected to be the sidekick of my mom and my dad. And I think as a little kid, I was really polite and nice to my parents. And I felt like my job was to be a chameleon for them. Now, in retrospect, that I look back on it, I'm not sure if I was fully allowed to be my full self, even though both my parents are very liberal and open minded and progressive and um, they didn't talk down to me and, and treat me in a condescending manner, although they're both very critical and invalidating without realizing it. So 
in my therapy session today, I end the group therapy. Usually when I join groups, it's really uncomfortable. Like when I'm an art model in a group, I'm very comfortable. But when I'm in a therapy group or my creative writing group, I notice that I feel kind of defensive and competitive. And I feel like I have to fight for my right to have my own opinion, which is usually different than all the other people in the group. Like I'm one of the few people that I've heard question the, I won't say the word out loud, but questioning that um, treatment. Um, it's not something that I want to be forced on anyone. And I believe in keeping records of things that happen with all kinds of medical treatments that are helpful versus harmful. I feed my cat a raw meat diet. As an example, he's mildly diabetic. The mainstream vet wanted me to inject him with insulin and prick his ears every day and check his blood sugar a few times a day, bring him to the vet, make him go through a blood curve test, which takes 16 hours, which would stress my cat out big time, his heart rate, my cat drools when I take him to the vet. So to make a long story short, if I did what the mainstream vet wanted me to do for my cat, my cat would no longer probably be with us. He would be really stressed out. To make a long story short, I took my cat to a holistic naturopathic vet and she agreed with me that switching him to a raw meat, nutritionally balanced for all life stages, food regime would be better for him. He doesn't require insulin. He doesn't require having his ears pricked every day with a needle. Some cats tolerate that quite well. My cat did not, I tried several times. Um, and I feel defensive even saying that out loud on this camera, but I'm using that as an example of sometimes mainstream medical protocol is not the best thing to do. And for my cat and for my health, I quit eating wheat and gluten and my thyroid got better and I don't need any medication anymore. So there are examples of doctors who help people with nutrition and lifestyle changes to the point where they don't need medication anymore. Intermittent fasting has also helped me, time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting. So I am somebody who questions everything I question all kinds of authority, whether it's a punk rocker telling me what to do or any mainstream or alternative person. Um, and so my mom and dad and boyfriend, all three have a very different opinion about certain medical things right now than I do. And I want compassion and empathy from them because I have compassion for their point of view. At least I like to think I do even if I think they're wrong, I would like them to also have compassion and empathy from my point of view and to respect my concern for their health. I respect my health, I respect their health. I don't use harsh chemicals to clean my house or my skin or my laundry. And I feed my cat a raw meat diet that's nutritionally balanced for cats. Um, and I eat meat. I eat liver and heart and kidney. I've even eaten brain and I've eaten, I eat beef, lamb, bison, camel, um, chicken, pork, uh, tilapia fish, um, uh, salmon, um, shrimp, calamari, scallops. I, I put as much variety in my diet as I can. Every single day I eat a different kind of meat and I eat all the fat that comes on the meat. Refined seed oils are very bad for humans. And I eat uh, natural fat. I cook with pork lard and ghee butter. And I don't use any refined seed oils. Um, and that makes sense to me. And I've listened to many doctors who are trailblazers who talk about this. Um, so the way that I eat and sleep and exercise is healthy for me. And that's my focus is on health, real health close to nature, 
When at all possible, I think it's best to try to not need a bunch of medications that can give you side effects. Sometimes medication can save your life and antibiotics can save your life, but if you over medicate yourself and you over chemicalize your life, it can harm you. And you know, we would never go into the forest and rub uh, sterilizing bleach and harsh chemicals all over the trees thinking we would clean up the forest. The forest is full of earth, which is full of microorganisms, bacteria, fungus, mold, a virus, you know, different various microorganisms. Our guts are full of microorganisms. And so I'm once again acknowledging that I feel like an outsider and an outcast. And I'm trying, you know, I like to say in cast the outcast, outcast the in cast, decrease the corporation, increase cooperation. So that's part of one of my poems. I listen to a lot of Tom Petty and Tori Amos music because a lot of their lyrics are about standing up for yourself and doing what you think is best and not letting other people push you around. So a lot of their lyrics, both of them have lyrics that are very much like that. So thank you, Tom Petty and Tori Amos for being such amazing songwriters. Rest in peace, Tom Petty, you widen my jetty and Tori Amos is still with us. And I'm excited to hear her new album whenever it comes out. She put out a few uh, holiday songs recently that are beautiful, um, but I'm really looking forward to her regular album whenever it comes out. Um, I think she's working on it right now. Just wanted to share how I feel today. It is February 1st, 2021. My name is Shannon Kringen. I live in Seattle. Uh, I'm an artist and a model and a free range human being. I have a radio show on every Thursday called Goddess Kring Free Range Radio. And my website is shannonkringen.com. I offer my photos on Flickr, free to publish under Creative Commons license. And uh, I'm trying to figure out if I'm autistic, I might be a bit autistic. And when I say that I'm not putting myself down, I am a very intelligent, uh, gifted human being, but I also have deficits. Like I have certain parts of me seem like I'm sort of stuck like a nine-year-old. Like part of me is, you know, I'm 52, I'm an only child. I never had kids, I never got married. I didn't even start driving a car till I was in my forties. So I'm kind of a late bloomer in some ways. And yet I'm a really gifted artist and model. I'm very intuitive and I do improvisational, uh, abstract, non-representational drawings. You know, I've created a lot of cool artwork. I made my, um, I silk screened this t-shirt. This is a photo I took of myself. And then I silk screened it onto this shirt. Um, I do a lot of good things. I'm really good with my cat. I'm really good with my house plants. Like I'm a very intelligent, gifted human being, but I'm also like, I feel like I have so much potential and I'm not really achieving my potential uh, perhaps, but I give myself credit for all the great things I've done. And some people think I'm a narcissist. Uh, I'm not really sure if I am or not. Maybe my mom and dad and I are all three narcissists. I don't know. My grandmother, my mom says my grandma was a narcissist. Hey, I don't know. None of us have been diagnosed narcissist but I don't want to put myself down. I just, I, I admire people who acknowledge their flaws and apologize for their flaws, but also, you know, like if you talk about how great you are, then people say, oh, you're so full of yourself. And then if you acknowledge what's wrong with you, people use that against you. So it's kind of like, I need to forget about all of that and not worry about what other people think of me and just do my best. So I hope my words are helping somebody listening. Have a nice day, everyone. It is February 1st, 2021. It is Mike Campbell's birthday. He's the guitarist that played with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Happy birthday, Mike Campbell. Just wanted to share that. And okay, I'm going to go for now. Have a nice day. I'm going to go for another walk, I think. Bye. Bye from Seattle. I'm a free range human being. <laughs>